What can we expect for season three? I don't know. <laughs> Isn't it? I just got hot. Nicola, what a moment. Bridgerton season two finally here. How <laughs> excited are you and what would you tease for the fans that they're gonna get? I am so excited. I mean, it feels like it's always nice to get to this point when you're like, it's almost ready to share with the world. It's like your baby and you're like, here it is. I hope you love it as much as I love it. Um, it's a, it's really funny because we have, you know, the advantage of this being based on a book series. So we know that this is a book that the book fans are obsessed with and have really wanted to get to this story of Kate and Anthony. So it just feels like, oh, we're going in, you know, with a winner already. It's great. She's threatening my family, Pen. I should get rid of these. If the Queen discovers I have all of these in my possession, then it will only make me appear that much more guilty. But you are not guilty, Elle. Now, we really see this cat and mouse game between Penelope and Eloise, and I just wondered how much fun that was for you and Claudia to play, because she's told me you two are quite good friends. We're really good friends, and it's amazing. And yeah, playing it with her, she's just such a fantastic actor, and she's just a pleasure to be around as well. So it just makes the days on set which can be super long days. It makes them just easy and fun. But also I think a lot of it, this time because you know Penelope's Lady Whistledown, you are very much aware of when she's not telling the truth. And I, I'm honest to a fault. So I found it really like, uncomfortable. So when Penelope's outright talking at Eloise about Lady Whistledown, I was like sweating. I was like, and they call cut and I'd go, oh, that didn't feel good. <laughs> that felt really bad actually. By the way, speaking of sweating, I mean, you guys wear the corsets and the wigs and everything. What are some tips you would, you've now learned heading into season two, all of you, about just like how to perform in these costumes and like, like, do you put on extra deodorant? Do you do more <laughs> shallow breaths? What do you do? I think some people like to take them off at lunchtime. I would advise against that because it's like, I would equate it to, you know, sometimes when you're at a party and your high heel starts hurting and when you take it off, then you can't, you can't get your foot back in it. It's essentially the same thing. So I'm like, just bear with the corset, just stay in it. I bring a pillow with me all the time so that I can sort of prop myself up like this. So you don't ruin the hair. I've sort of found ways to sit in my trailer that's not, it's just, yeah, tricks of the trade. You learn as you go along. Is there anything you took home from set with you? I took home, I have a dance cards. Oh. Um, they sometimes, yeah, the props guys, they don't, I ask, I try not to steal them. I have those, but not too much. I feel like in season three, I'm going to go in and start clearing out because people ask all the time. I'm like, I've got barely anything. I need to kit my place out. Um, now, Shonda just told me we're going out of order. We're mixing things up. So what can we expect for season three? Is it a story of Penelope and Colin? I don't know. <laughs> I did not know she said that. I just got hot. I just got hot. Look, we end it with this big fight and it makes me want more from Eloise, from Penelope, from Colin. There, there's a heartbreaking moment where Penelope hears Colin talking about her. You're courting the girl, Bridget. Uh, are you mad? I would never dream of courting Penelope Featherington. Not in your wildest fantasies, Fife. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a bi it's, it's a big one. And that's something from Penelope and Colin's book that happens, you know, when they're quite young and she hears him sort of go, yeah, I would never, I would never date her. It's not going to happen. But um, Luke Newton and I, Luke who plays Colin, we spoke to Chris Van Dusen, the showrunner, and we were like, you know, where is it going? What's going to happen? And he sort of said, and we took that moment in, <clears throat> we put it in, we took it out, all this. And I, I always felt like it was important to put it in because Penelope just thinks Colin's perfect and she's got to realize he's not perfect. He's just human. Okay, so Colin for season three. <laughs> what? <laughs> Tips or juice. What do you know? What have you been told? For season three, three you know, I, I genuinely haven't asked very much because it's <clears throat> it's when the seasons are happening, it's so all encompassing. It takes over your world that I really wanted to get season two out there and celebrate it and let it have its moment before I start. Cause it, it just takes over your life. It takes over your life. So I'm like, so I've, I'm waiting. I don't know, maybe like a week after season one is out there in the world then. Okay. Yeah. Well, knowing how season two ends, what do you want for Penelope? I will say, I want Penelope to have a steamy scene. I want her to have an intimate moment. I mean, that, that's the thing about being commissioned for four seasons. I know the love story is coming. So I'm like, but then it's like sort of terrifying. And because I know it's Luke and I've known Luke now for like three years that we joke in the beginning, we joked about it. We're like, oh, it's so funny. It's, you know, it's going to be a ha ha ha, like those kind of scenes. And then now it's like becoming more real by the day. And we're like, oh, okay. Oh God, um, it's a bit it's so scary, so scary. But I do, yeah, I do want her to find love, and I don't want her to stop writing Whistle Down. I want her to have everything. I want her to have everything. Have you read all the books? 
I've read, so I've read them, I read book four first, okay. Penelope and Colin's book, and then I read book one and two. I haven't read three yet. I ended my friendship with Theo because of you. One of the only good things in my life all because of your self-serving manipulation. You have no idea how horrible it's felt to keep this from you. So tell the fans, give the fans some hope, or maybe not, can Eloise and Penelope recover from this fight? What will happen? They have to get over, they have to, because I, it would break my heart. Also, I think, you know, in deep lifelong friendships, there are moments like that where you do fight and you've just got to, you know, you've got to just learn to grow and get over it. But I think Penelope's got some apologizing to do. I think she's got some apologizing to do. Last question, give me your favorite stage direction from the script. Claudia told me there are some hilarious ones, like well, some they, AFs. What's your favorite one? The funniest ones I have to say are like the, the sexy scenes. Um, Cause Betsy Beers, who is a legendary executive at Shondaland, she, um, she reads them and she gives it her everything. So I, I, I don't want to say it's a little too explicit, but you can imagine what it's like sitting in a room, just at a bunch of tables and someone reading out Thing. Say it, Nicola. Please say it. We'll oh believe gosh. it. She reads it. She's like, she's like, she reads it at speed. She's like, and he's kissing her, and it's amazing. And they're in this library, and he's going, he's going down, and he's da, 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 and you're like, it's all kind of like that. <laughs> Can't remember verbatim, but it's the vibe. That's the vibe.